Okay, so um, we're letting some people roll in here, and hopefully you guys can hear me. Get a thumbs up there. Yep, we're good. All right. All right, so my name is Dane Clement. I am uh, president of Great Dane Graphics and vice president of Art and Creative Process for Group Stall. Uh, I've been in the apparel decorating industry since 1991. That's when I started Great Dane Graphics. Uh, we create um, full color artwork. That's what we're best known for. We actually create artwork for all kinds of decorating uh, processes from vinyl cutting to regular screen printing and that sort of thing. But we're known for our full color stuff. Um, and today what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna show you how to create really cool designs um, using Transfer Express's uh, Easy View Designer. So if you're not an artist, don't sweat it. This designer is super easy to use. Uh, and I'll walk you through some things uh, as far as, you know, uh, how to create your own custom design. I mean, there's a ton, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of designs already like created, like templates, right? That you can select to start it off and you can add some type and make it yours and swap out, you know, clip arts and that sort of thing. Um, but what I'm going to do is that we're just going to create one from scratch, right? We're just going to sort of get into it and just start pulling pieces and parts because I want to show you that it's super easy to do. Uh, and I think you're going to have fun. I had fun creating this. Uh, so um, uh, now before I get started, if you guys have any questions, you can contact me through the web portal thing there, the uh, Stalls Live event thing and ask for a meeting or call or emails or that sort of thing once this is over. Um, or you can email me at Dane, D-A-N-E, at greatdangraphics.com. Uh, you can go to our, our website, greatdangraphics.com, and check us out and email me through there as well. So if you got any questions, let me know. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to share my screen. Usually works pretty quick and easy. All right. I think we got this, right, Ryan? Yes, sir. Right. I'm just going to move my stuff around on my backup monitor here and uh, get me squared up. All right, so first thing I'm going to do before we actually start creating is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to look into the uh, open job button here. Just to show you, these are some designs that we've created in the designer, right? Uh, all custom, all put together and whatnot. So. This is the new one, though. This is the one that I'm going to go ahead and create for you today. I'll show you exactly how I did it. Uh, and there's there's a there's a couple of things that I want to do here. So um, and in some basically, we get a lot of questions from people that are new to designing stuff for T-shirts or new to the the Transfer Express designer and that sort of thing. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just show you as I go, and we'll talk about what it took to put this together, right? <clears throat> so um, first thing I'm gonna do is every time I come in, it always defaults to a horizontal page. And that's cool, not a problem. But what I wanna do is I wanna do it as a portrait um, just because that's kind of how I like to do things. I can see my binding box, right? So all my graphics that I'm gonna create has to stay inside that. Now, when you start up your design, you're going to come to a first fresh page, right? And the first thing you need to do is come over here to the right-hand side, and you just got to set some things up. So if you look at this image, we have some full-color raster artwork, right? This campfire, which is super cool, um, and these marshmallows, which look really good. Uh, so that's those are raster files, <clears throat> and the words and the shapes and stuff, that's vector files. Uh, so this designer can handle both. So you can upload photos, full color graphics like this or whatever, right? So if you go over to the right-hand side um, in the print method, right? Go to the drop-down menu and you'll have a bunch of things here. So we can do a screen printing one, digital. Now these are already set because my design's already done, um, but I'm going to choose full color because that's what I want. That's what the design is. It's got, there's no... There's no hot telling how many colors are in this and it doesn't matter, right? As long as it says full color, they'll print it digitally and we can get any color we want. So the next thing here is the transfer type. Um, we only have two available, but when you're in your fresh, you know, uh, window, you're going to have other things like goof proof and that sort of thing. So um, I want an ultra color soft. That's because I want the full color designs. Um, my fabric, I just chose 100% cotton. Uh, and I wanted a sheet size, right? So there's a whole bunch of different sizes, but 
the, the largest size we can create on is 11 is 11 and a half by 18 inches, right? So that's the sheet size that I want. And there's a couple of reasons I want to do that is because one is if you look at this design, right? I can make it a little bit smaller to fit. You want to make sure that that binding box that you see there, those green, um, uh, uh, they're not marching ants, but they're dashed lines, right? You want to make sure that it fits inside of the, the those lines right there. So that'll make sure that it can print. And if I, whoops, if I select everything and kind of move it up, right, like this, um, I can take that same big design and we can duplicate it and make it small, like for a left chest or, you know, a hat or something, trucker hat we want to, we want to print or a yoke on the back of a shirt. So you can get those done on the same sheet when you send out your, for your transfer, right? You place your order. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that here in, in a little while. But first thing we're going to do is I want to go ahead and show you basically how I built this, which is um, super easy. And in doing so, that's going to show you how the designer works, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, select all this and I'm going to make it smaller. All right, I'm just going to put it right here. That way you have a reference while I build. Now, obviously, it wasn't sitting there when I created it in the beginning, right? We just sort of pulled pieces and said, let's do a design for that, right? So I guess summer's coming, you know, getting to be the end here pretty soon, unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever outlook you have on summertime. Uh, but you know, we're coming into the fall here in a little, not so uh, distant future. So um, that's when we do a little few campfires down here in the homestead. So, uh, so I made it a little bit smaller. So first thing I'm going to do is we're going to bring in, well, what I'll do is we're going to, 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 to kind of explain to you, we're going to design using layers, right? So in Photoshop or Affinity Photo, they have layers that you actually see the stacking order of things Now we don't have that technically the same way inside the designer but you do have stacking and layer capabilities pretty much and that's how we're going to build this because if you notice um, you can see here we have the the uh, marshmallows came in first and then we put the diamonds on top right this diamond shape because it hides it and then we put some text on top of that so we literally just built one put one element down put a next element and a next element and the next element on top of that so that's kind of what layers do uh, in a design software so um, you have that same benefit right here uh, super easy to do all right so let's do it let's go ahead and add some clip art first right we're going to add those marshmallows so if you go in here and hit add clip art um, it'll slide out a whole bunch of stuff and if you look over here on the left hand side there's all kind of categories and things that you can choose right um, and you can literally just go right here and just start scrolling and you'll see these little blue bars at the bottom of every window. It says load more and it'll just keep pushing it. Right. So if you don't have an idea or if you don't have a direction you're thinking of, that's kind of like just random stuff. Um, but if you wanted to, to choose something specific, you can type it. Uh, but I know I want to get those marshmallows and I know that is a uh, Great Dane design, right? This is the kind of designs that Great Dane graphics are known for. And we're going to hit the full color Great Dane because most all of our designs are in here already. So I'm going to come in here and just sort of scroll through and scroll through and I'll get to my blue bar here, right? So I'm just going to hit load. And what you're seeing here, these are the most recent images, right? So at Great Dane Graphics, we add new designs or new full color graphics, new vinyl cutting graphics and everything uh, every single week. So on Wednesday mornings, if you go check it out, there'll be five new designs with multiple decorating technique uh, files in there. So if you take a look, um, I'm just going to go ahead and scroll and I'm looking for those. Um, here we go. I'm looking for the marshmallow. So I click on it and it automatically places it right in the designer for us. So now what I want to do is I want to blow this up because this is kind of my main element, right? It's it's behind everything, um, but it's the largest element on my on my design. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do that and kind of push it in, push it down. Here we go. There we go. So you see they got the two sticks, you know, nice, awesome uh, roasted marshmallows. So the next thing we're going to do is we'll grab that funky fun little diamond shape right in the background so we'll do what is that that's clip art right so we're going to head and add another piece of clip art this time though if you notice it was just a um it's a flat color so i just want a shape and i can choose any shape that that you want so we on the add art section the left side of this window if we come down to shapes right and then i'm gonna start uh, look here we got we have bursts and circles and diamonds and hearts and all 
rectangles and all sort of things. So what I'm looking for is just go to the diamonds because I have an X, if you notice, in my, with my uh, marshmallows, and then I'm going to put a diamond in it. It just kind of fits it really nice. So I can scroll through here, and I don't know about you guys. I don't know how this happened, but I'm pretty sure this is not a diamond. Kind of a circle. I don't know. But that's all right. It don't matter to me. So I'm going to go ahead and click the load more button here. I'm just looking for, here we go. It's a fun, funky edged diamond. I click on it. There it goes. So now I can just enlarge it, right, and then place it in position here. Something like that looks pretty good. Now, if I click on this artwork, so that we just brought it in. If you look over on the left-hand side, right, we uh, is how big it is. If right now it's just under 10 inches, right? And you look here, I have black in this color here. So that means what you see is black, obviously is black. And this color means no ink, okay? And that's an actual color in the designer, which is pretty cool because it's going to allow the shirt color to show through. So there will be no ink printed in that area. So no matter what color shirt we use or design on, that's going to show in that area. If we wanted it to be white, then we would put white in there, for instance, right? So and if you notice over here, I mean, this is a, um, I don't know, maybe a cement color. I just kind of wanted a light cream color. So I chose it right here in the apparel colors. You can click on that. Whoops, not that. Whoops. Click on the square there, right? We want to change the color and you'll see all the options available to you. There's a whole bunch of t-shirt colors pretty much, right? So this one happens to be, if I cruise over here to, it is called cement. So you click on that and you can change. Now, if I wanted to change it to something else, well, I'll, I'll show you this for instance, let's just go to, uh, let's do a khaki, right? Khaki for me on this one is a little bit too dark only mainly because I can't see these outlines really well, right? So my, my dashed lines, which shows me um, this is where, you know, my design needs to fit into. I, it, they're sort of, they just sort of disappear because of that color. But if you look over here, let's see if I can zoom in on it a little bit, right? And you can see the background color with my t-shirt color and the no inks, which you see right here, that's in this word got, right? Got some more. Hmm. This the got word, the, the, the shirt is showing through and inside this, in between those two, right? In between that solid uh, diamond and the outline of that diamond is the shirt color as well. Uh, same thing with here, when we place this oval, we got no ink in there and we let the shirt color show through. So uh, when I change this color back to the one I liked and I want the one I wanna design on the cement, you can go ahead and see it here, right? So we still see white in this because I put white in the word s'more uh, and this is just a shirt. That's the no ink stuff. So how do we colorize that? If I click on this diamond here, right? If you go, we got two colors. Well, what I need to do is I need to split it off, right? Because if I went ahead and changed this, if I say, you know what? I want that color to be what? This midnight blue is the color I used. Well, when I colorize that, my outline is midnight blue also. And I still have the no ink in here, which is cool because that's what I wanted. But if you notice on my design, I wanted my outline to be a brown color, kind of go with the sticks and whatever, right? So if I select this thing and go to object, I can come down to ungroup. Anytime you see that thing as ungroup as an option, that means there's multiple pieces together, right? So now watch what happens. If I click on the inside square, you can see my dotted line. It starts on the inside solid diamond, right? So it's not selected or it's not touching the outline of it. So with that selected, if you look over here and see my color, it's that blue. So if I click on it, it's midnight blue. That's what I want. If I wanted to choose a brighter or a different blue, I can do it that way, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it with midnight blue. I just wanted to show you. But if you, if you notice, there's a light blue, right? Uh, on, on the main diamond, but there's still a dark blue in the background. So I'm gonna go to midnight blue here. And I'm going to come over this way and just select the outline or the, you know, click on it to select that diamond shape uh, on my outline. And now I'm going to make that brown, right? See, brown, dark. So that's how you uh, take one, something that comes in as one element, right? If it's grouped together, just remember to go to the object menu. And if this ungroup is available to you, you can split it apart and colorize them differently, right? So, um, Super easy and pretty powerful stuff. All right, so let's see. Um, next, right? So next, we're gonna head and set some type. So let's go ahead and we're gonna type the uh, small word first. 
So I'm going to go up over to the left-hand side. We'll add text, right? Now, right here, this font is going to come in probably the last one that you used. Now, this the name of this font is Bone Style, okay? And the only reason <clears throat> it's used in here, because it kind of looks like sticks to me. So, and that's what it was for. Well, I want to set the s'more word. And we'll go ahead and take a look at this font here, right? And click on that. So at the top section here, I can scroll and scroll and scroll and load more. I mean, there's a boatload of fonts. So take a look and see which font style you like uh, and click again to load some more. So, you know, there's there's this way to do it, okay? You can click on that little folder there and there's, you know, if you want a sports block or you want something artistic or a script, this just sort of focuses them on that, right? Categorizes them down. So you have to, so if I know I wanted this to be a script, for instance, I can click on script and I'm just looking through scripts, but I kind of like to just scroll through all of them because you never know what your design uh, looks like or what you have in your head, what font's going to work, right? So for instance, if you look here, this says in use, okay? The only reason you see something here is because obviously I kept my original in here, right? When I created that design, that's the two fonts I use, right? So this says Jolly Christmas. That's the font that I use for the s'more. Well, obviously this is not Christmas. This is not a Christmas design. So that's why I like to look at all the fonts because just the stylistic treatment of the letters and stuff might spark an idea. So for instance, if I choose that, now we got this one. And this was, if you think, I'm wondering if you can think of why we use this one for this. So just because this, which would be snow, I'm supposing, for if it was a Christmas design, right? This is my gooey, gooey, melted marshmallows. That's why we created it. So uh, no big deal, right? But that's that's my the way I think, the way we kind of put stuff together. So it doesn't matter exactly what it is, the, what the name of it is. It just, if it fits your design, you're good to go. So it says new text there. So if I come over to the left-hand side, and typically when you design things, and want to change stuff, that happens on the left hand of your screen, right? Sometimes when we select certain elements, we have to make, we have to come over here and you'll see that probably in a little while, but so I want to just select and drag inside here and that's where we're going to go ahead and uh, set it. So we do an S apostrophe more question mark. There we go. All right, so now I'm, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make it bigger, right? Well, if you notice, and, I, and I'm going to do this for those of you that hold that, um, <laughs> Have ever used Illustrator or Photoshop or something? If you wanted to, to enlarge something and keep it proportional, you'll hold a shift key a lot of times. Until recently, Adobe decided to change that after 25 years of me doing it another way. Um, but all we're going to do is we're going to click and drag to make it larger. Well, if you notice on my design, I stretched it up, right? So it's easy to do it that way. You just got to come over here. Remember, you want to make an adjustment to things on the left hand side of your screen here. Um, you see this lock aspect ratio? If I uncheck that box, watch this. Now I can kind of squeeze it in. I can stretch it up and kind of design it how I want, right? So that to me is a little bit better. I'm going to come over here and get this little wheel on the right-hand side there and, and kind of move it up, uh, rotate it up, I guess I should say, not really moving it much. Okay, so that's looking kind of where I want it, right? Now, if you notice, I did a little bit more treatment to it on there. So we have the white included uh, and we have the blue face of the type is now blue, not black like it is at the moment. And then we have the, the brown outline to match our, our diamond outline, right? So the way we do that is we come over here and we click on the word, right? And we'll come over here to scroll up and you'll see the color, right? So I can change that to midnight blue if I wanted. You won't be able to see it because it's all blue in that area, but you see my letter is now now blue, right? So I'm going to uh, select on it again, and I'm going to scroll up. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for effects. So it's just a way to, everything's kind of sitting in here. When I scrolled up, I'm kind of, it stopped. Like I can't keep scrolling. Um, but if you notice, it says show special effects, this little arrow, you can click on it, and it's going to show you some more options, basically. So go there and hit effects. Um, and I have this text that, are, that my text is selected. So it's going to pull up here available effects for my text. And I'm just going to come over here and look for this separated outline. It's kind of my favorite go-to if you've ever seen any of these videos I do. I like it because it allows me to have multiple colors, right? A face color, a mid color, and then an outline 
and I can change them all. I can have them all the same color if I want, but I can adjust it. So this looks pretty good. So I'm going to click on that. And remember earlier when I said when you select things on the left-hand side, sometimes you have to look over here to the right. So uh, pretty much you're, you just got to make sure your eyes pay attention to the whole screen. So I clicked on the separated outline and it does what it needed to do. So now if you look at it, though, inside my white marshmallow ooey gooeyness, uh, you see that gray in there. I don't want the gray in there. So if I come over to this side, I can select my gray here, right? Actually, I'm going to leave it gray. I'm going to click on my plus arrow and watch those things. See, it got smaller here. I'm going to click on the width of it again, and it's going to go ahead. And now it's all white in that area. All right. So I can now, if, if that looks good, to see the done um, thing here at the bottom, I just go ahead and click done, and it moves it over. All right. Oops. Let's go ahead and select this. And I'm going to hide this. I'm going to scroll down because I want to see my colors, right? So I selected my type. So we almost have the type like we want it. We have um, my blue face, right? Uh, now, if I if I click on, if you come here, you can see it. So it's got this section of text has three colors, blue, um, this white, and this gray. So what I want, though, is I want to click on this gray, and I want to change that to my brown, okay, like you see there. And this, I just want to make sure I click on it and make it white, okay, because... Um, no ink would have checkers and that little thing. Now, I don't want the no ink to be there um, because I want it to stand off different. I want that to be my marshmallow white. That's why I want an actual white and it's not the got color, like the shirt color, like you see there. So um, now you see it's a little bit too big. Now we break in the binding box. So if we click on it, we can just shrink it down a little bit and make sure it fits inside. Uh, I can hit my arrow keys, by the way, to nudge it this way and that. And that's pretty cool. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and, and uh, add the uh, word got up here, right? So we're going to add text. So click on the add text again. This time it's going to do the bone style here. And I'm just moving it so we can see it, make sure I spell it right without doing it on top of the image. I grew up in the New Orleans area. We like our afternoon coffees. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and um, set the type. Man, this is a real tough one, right? Three whole letters. Got. Bring it up here. Just going to kind of zoom in a little bit. I'm going to grab my hand tool here and kind of center it up again. All right. So I'm going to grab my word. I'm going to shrink it up a little bit and kind of bring it in position and outline. I mean, outline. Turn it like I want. Just get it to fit inside the uh, diamond here like we have, that looks good. So let's go back on this side and show my effects and stuff. Whoops, what I'm doing is I'm looking for my color. I'm gonna scroll, get to my color. And this, I wanna do my no ink, right? So we come over here, we hit no ink. And now you see my shirt's color is showing through, all right? So that looks pretty cool. Now the fun part, let's go ahead and get these this campfire. And there's a little something that, I'm going to have to explain when it comes to this particular graphic, right? So I'm going to go ahead and um, add clip art. <clears throat> and of course, it's coolness and it's full color. So first place I'm going to go is my full color Great Dane. And we can scroll and look and hit the load more button. But just to show you, one of the, there's ways to do it, right? So if we come to search, I can hit, I'm, a, I'm looking for a campfire. So if I hit camp, you don't even have to do the whole word. You could if you wanted to. And it pulls it right up here, right? So if you take a look, that's the one I'm looking for. And there's other ones that we have and so on. But click on there and it brings it in. Now, something about this graphic, right? So if you look, and let me see if I can move with my hand. There we go. I'm just can kind of move it down. Now I'm going to grab it and bring it down here. So what I want you to see is there's faded edges around this thing. So that's problematic for the this decorating technique and it's not a big problem that's why i want to focus in on it because i'm going to show you how we can get around it to where they can print transfers for you and no sweat so if you if you have graphics that you're going to use your own artwork and you're going to upload and create your design if your design has soft faded edges like this you have to put a solid something behind it right it has to be contained within something that has a harder edge, uh, just like you would see here in my diamond, 
right? So this diamond is a is a diamond shape. I'm gonna come back here, move, uh, right? So if I take this soft faded edge and put it inside of here, that's not a, it won't be a problem. They can do it. So I'm gonna click on here and, and drag it down because I, I kind of want it to fit in between the two sticks. <clears throat> and I can't do it here though. You see that? I have to keep going until it's inside there. All the soft faded edges need to be contained inside the shape. So something like that, and we're good to go. You can make it a little bit bigger if you want. Yeah, like there, right? So now we can use it, right? If you, again, if you load your own artwork up, it's got a faded edge, we cannot print it like that. It has to have something behind it so it'll work. So if you, if you notice the marshmallows and the sticks, there is nothing around those edges. Those have a hard edge. It's not a soft faded edge, so it won't be a problem. So um, just know that it's a big deal, but it's also, it's, it's, it's easy. If it's got a soft edge, put it on top of something. And then that, tell, that right there alone, that one thing allows you to make anything you want, right? It's got a soft edge, so what? I know how to use it, right? In the store, you can create anything. So, um, so that's a big deal, but it's super easy, no biggie. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, add the oval shape here, right? So I'm gonna come in and add some more clip art. Uh, and I'm come down the shapes. Whoops, I'm gonna come down the shapes. Now I'll scroll up to it. And I'm looking for, I don't know, ovals. So here's some ovals here and just, you know, load some more. Uh, keep going till you see something you like. Uh, let's see, Where we, here we go. This is the one I used. So I liked it, you click on it, magically brings it in. Right. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and move it in position. So now here it is. Okay. So if you, it's selected right now and it's selected the way I know it's selected is because it has these, this binding box on it, right? When I click off of it, nothing's selected. So if I click on it again, it's selected and we can adjust it by the stuff that's on the left side of your screen here. So you see that my color right now is black and I have no ink in the middle, right? So I'm going to go ahead and change the black. I'm going to click on it and I want to make that brown right? Because I want it to be like the outline of everything else. And I'm going to pull it up in here. Um, I, I don't like it maxed out loud. You know what? A lot of times when you squint and you look at things, you can kind of get a better understanding of what's happening. That doesn't, it's not bad. I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that. I think um, I did like the way that if I make it smaller, because I can't do if I did it like this, watch, if I just pushed it up, then it runs into my sticks. I don't like the way that looks, but I kind of do like the way the campfire comes over the oval here. So, right. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller and kind of reposition it a little bit like this. See, now it's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click off of everything and just kind of look. It's kind of the way I design stuff, right? Squint your eyes and see if that works for you. That looks pretty good, but I want this campfire to be on top. So if I select it right now, and if I go to uh, order, right, I move it to the top. So that it moved it right over it. So now the camp, the logs in the campfire kind of break the edges of that oval. Now, the thing about that is the reason this works here is because all these logs have a hard edge, right? You can see it. Um, the flames, on the other hand, are very soft and airbrushy, you know, painted up. So that has to stay inside that solid shape. These parts can are fine just like they are. So uh, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and add some more type. And maybe we're going to do, we'll stick with it. Limit. That's me, by the way. Just saying, in case you didn't know. All right. We're going to put it in here. That works while it's selected. Come over here, scroll up. Click on the color and I'm gonna go ahead and make it brown. No, I'm gonna make it blue because it does look better in blue. Cool. And I can click on it, see how it's it's kind of off center a little bit and it's probably a little bit too high and you know not centered and whatnot. So um, I can make it bigger, right? And just click and move. That the cool thing is just put it where you want it. Uh, and click off of it. Now I'm gonna click on it here and I'm gonna nudge it twice over. That works for me. 
Uh, one more thing, add text. Every time you add text, it's gonna give you a new line. And let's go ahead and do the uh, family uh, reunion 2021. All right, make it smaller. Now, what I did for this, I just sort of lined it up with my oval, okay? And I shrunk it until it was the same size as the oval, right? And then now I can just drop it down like that. We'll change its color. Go to brown with it. And that looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and grab my pan tool and kind of come down a little bit. Um, I'm going to try to zoom out. Because I want to see my whole page. OK, so that looks pretty good. I like it. The design is done. I think it's cool. It's got some full color graphics, has some vector type and things, right? So um, that looks good. So if if it is done and it's done, what I'd like to do is this. I'll go ahead and drag, select it, the whole thing like that, right? And go to the object menu and come down to group it. So what we just did was we took all those individual elements that we made, all the letters, I mean, all the, the text and all the, you know, the campfire, everything, and we just made it one unit, which means if I came over here to click on just these marshmallows, if I click and drag, look what happens. The whole thing moves as a unit, which is great because if I didn't group it together, right, then I could click on it and move it, and then I, I could move other things at the same time and just totally have it my disjointed design and have to kind of recompile it and move it and uh, make it work all over again. So just group it and you're good to go. So this looks pretty good. If I select it again, let's take a look. I can see how big it is over here on the, on the left-hand side, right? So right now we're about 11 and a quarter inches wide and 13.75 inches, which is almost 14 inches. So that's a that's a full on full front of a shirt, which is cool. So if I click and drag it all the way up to the top or just about to the top, right? You want those dashed lines to be just inside those, the page uh, sheet size lines. Um, that looks pretty good. So if I grab the same thing, right? I can go to, to, let's go to object, is it? And duplicate, okay? Now we have two. Uh, so let's, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna see, look, here's one. If I just click and drag, it wasn't grouped when I moved it over. Okay. So I'm just going to delete these though. Cause we don't, I'm not worried about those cause it's slightly different. Um, but I got this guy here and if I wanted to make it smaller, I'm just going to click and drag it down. Right. And take a look at, at the width of it is, is three and a half by say five almost. Right. So, uh, if I wanted this, can I do this? 3.5. Actually, let me undo what I just did there. Yeah, because I skewed it up. All right. Do one more. There we go. All right. So it's, I'm going to lock my ratio here. Now let's just make it, uh, let's make it three inches wide. All right, so now if I bring it down here, I'm gonna zoom in. Remember, we're gonna make some left chests, so, or hat designs or whatever. So whatever you wanted to do, as long as you can fit it inside the shape or inside the sheet size, right? You're good to go. So this looks um, pretty good. Now let's go ahead and zoom out. And the reason I'm zooming out, because I wanna look at this, and I wanna kind of point this out. I can click this little guy here, right? He is, um, that's my left chest size or my yoke or whatever it is, a bag, whatever I'm going to put it on doesn't matter. I can just have multiple sizes. So um, I'm going to select it and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it again. So I'll go to object duplicate and I'm going to move it over this way. See that? What you want to do is make sure, and I'm going to do it again. Why not? Because I got the room. <laughs> So let's go to object menu and come down to duplicate again. And we'll bring it here. So I'm going to kind of put, put a little air space in here in between. That's good. So now when I get this thing printed, uh, it's going to print me a large one, uh, you know, at the top of my page and then three small ones. So I'm getting those four designs, every single sheet that I order, uh, which is, man, that is super cool. This is called the gang sheet. 
and um, it's super awesome. Uh, so basically, you want to try to do this. You want to try to keep it to where you have enough room in between each of these things. So when that sheet comes to you, remember, it's going to come to you uh, like this. All right, let's see. Try to get one more, get it all in there. All right. It's going to come to you like that, right? It's going to be printed on one sheet. Uh, so you can just cut it straight across here, right underneath the cut the large ones off. And then this, you know, one cut here, one cut here, my three individual pieces. So, um, all right. Anything else on this particular design? I don't think so. So what I want to do is I want to show a couple of other uh, designs that we created. And we'll kind of talk about those. Ryan, I don't know if anybody's got any questions or anything, anything you can roll through um, this transition time for a few minutes. Um, yeah, actually, um Somebody had a question about um, adding your own artwork and uh, using that in conjunction with our clip arts. Yeah, so let's go back to the home page here, right? Look at that. New artwork uploader. So you can go ahead and upload artwork, and that's it. And it'll take a whole bunch of file types. Let me see if I can, can I get back to the first. Let's see. I don't know if I can state it, but PDFs, JPEGs, PNGs, and TIFFs, right? It'll take all those files. And you just hit the upload and then it'll bring it into, into your designer and you can add clip arts and whatnot. Yeah. Right. And then another person had a question about um, they were having some issues when they're, when they're uploading their artwork um, into the system, they're getting um, um, on the lower left-hand side. Um, I believe that they're having issues where it's like little exclamation marks and um I think they have to do a color match. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. We just have to match the colors if it's if it's a screen print. Oh yeah, yeah. So um, well, I don't know how I would do that. How I would show that in here. Uh, yeah. So like, if somebody uploads something, if if it has you know colors that aren't part of our, um, you know, the 87 stock colors we have. Yeah, like, yeah. let's say for example, you're doing full color, so you've selected full color. But if that happens, let's say they're doing a screen print, goof proof, for example. Uh, the, the colors on the lower left where you have your color selection, if there's little exclamation marks in there, you have to click on those and you have to do a color match. So it'll then choose, pull yeah. up. Okay. Well, yeah, we did, we did kind of do that. I think when we clicked on, uh, let me go ahead. And now, by the way, if I want to ungroup this, cause I want to grab that small word. If I hit the object, I'd come down and ungroup it. And now there'll be individual pieces again. So let's see if I had my color there. Yeah, so when we when we first brought this thing in, it had a gray box and it had ex, uh, a little exclamation point in there. So what you do is you click it, and then you, it'll bring up all these colors, and then you choose the color that you're looking for, right? So if you have a, you know, I don't know, a purple, um, you're gonna have to choose one of these that are closest to whatever color that you had uh, initially. So I mean, it's as easy as that to color to to change things. So let's do it. Let's go ahead, and we're just gonna grab the the blue color inside my s'mores word and we'll make it purple because purple is my favorite color, by the way. So, you know, why not? <laughs> Might not look as good, you know, in my design, but that's all right. Anyway, you see that. So if, if I needed it or wanted it a purple, you got to choose one of our purples pretty much. Right. I know Julie just asked if she uploads a raster image, is there a charge to change it into a vector image? Uh, that's a different deal, right? So right. Um, you, I'd leave, I'll leave that one to you to answer. You would know better how that Right. Would so that. we actually, you know, we have um, an image editing tool where we'll try to vectorize it, but oftentimes um, it may not come out. You know, th this software is, um, you know, it's pretty comprehensive, but it's not Adobe Illustrator. It's not Photoshop. It's not Corel. It's not Affinity. So it has its limitations. Um, so the best thing to do is to, to invest in a decent software program if you're going to be using, you know, if you're trying to get vectored images. Um, you know, I know, uh, Dane, you're a pretty big fan of Affinity, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I mean, I'm an, I'm an Adobe user, right? But Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer are awesome applications. And the reason I like them is they're every bit as powerful as Adobe products, uh, just about. I mean, they do a they do 90% of what a Photoshop does, which and which does 100% of what we need in our industry. Let's put it that way. Um, and it's $50 one-time fee, so you can't beat the price. And a lot of times they have them on sale for half, half price. So you really can't beat it for 25 bucks. 
Yeah, that's definitely a good deal for sure. I know Tim just asked if he's making a single color design. Uh, can he have a screen print some transfers and export the design to his laser cutter or vinyl cutter to make other products using the same design? Uh, unfortunately, Tim, no, these designs in our designer are solely for um, Transfer Express. So uh, there is a way that I, um, if you look in the lower right of the, the screen, um, if Dane is back in the design, the designer, it's uh, the very lower right. If you scroll down, it says, um, um, I believe it's the apparel share button. Yes. Yeah, so if you look at the apparel share button, the lower right, it's got like the three little things. Like um, if you click on apparel share, you can share the design with your customer. So you can actually yeah, like this, right? You just can't export it to another program. And a lot of people ask for that, but unfortunately, no, it's only for, uh, for transfer express, but you can download it. You can email it. You can print it out to show customers a mock-up though. And if you go, if you want to go back, Dane, you just go click on the back button. There you go. Yeah. And uh, Michael just asked, are these images in the Easy View Designer royalty free? Yes. Yes, that, they are royalty free. Yeah, print a million t-shirts, man. I hope you do. That's, that's what we do it for. Right, for sure. All right, so we got, a, what, five more minutes. I just kind of want to show one other instance of this soft edge thing, because that's kind of a big deal um, when it comes to a lot of, uh, a lot of, people uploading their own designs and in a lot of, a lot of our graphics, right? So if I choose, uh, let's see, where is it? Open a job here, right? And because let's do this little dynamite dinosaur here. So this is one that I did. I don't know, Ryan, we did it a couple of classes back maybe, right? Yes. Uh, but the, it's one of my favorite. I think it's cool. So if you look at this dinosaur, right? this design is all faded edges. And again, I can't use it um, just this way, right? It will not work. But since we put it in a container, the container being this splat, right? This ink splatter thingy, uh, we're good. So I just wanted to make sure I, I kind of showed that one more time because um, it's a big deal. It's going to, if you upload something with a faded edge or even like this, you know, some of our designs have faded edges and we've tried to fix that or eliminate that for this designer. A um, couple of a couple, a couple of pieces got past us like this, but I'm um, didn't raise any red flags. You notice Ryan, I never told you about it. It's, I was kept it a secret, right? Because, one day, hopefully, that we'll fix that on a designer side. Um, but until that happens, all you got to do is put it in a container and you're good to go. So, again, that's why um, I didn't say anything and I don't I don't really worry about it because to me, this is a cool fix, right? This, as long as all of my little pieces are inside of a solid shape, we got no problem. So um, I just wanted to reiterate that because it's a it's very important Um as far as the production side of things, I suppose. Uh, you know what, let's do, let me pull this up really quick here because I'll show you how this was done, right? So this is all in pieces still, right? Um, so this design, this tree looks pretty cool. Well, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move it aside. I'm gonna show you kind of where we got that, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit a add clip art and let's just go down to, I don't know, let's put tree up here. And it shows us a whole bunch of trees. I'm gonna click on my load button and see if I can find the one that was used there. Hmm. Should I call it palm tree? There it is. So this is what it looks like, right? So if you wanted a one color version of this, you could colorize it like that. And then all you gotta do is come over here, hit the color button, and you can colorize it literally with whatever color you want, okay? Well, if you notice, we got all kinds of rainbow coloring going on in the in the stalk of it because it we can, first off, 
full color designer. So I'm gonna click on it, right? And go to object menu is another instance where if you see it ungroup, you can utilize that to your advantage, right? So I ungrouped it there, I'm gonna click on this. And if you notice, it has all these little pieces as one unit now, okay? Well, all I gotta do is go up to object menu again and ungroup it one more time. And then now I can select individual elements, right? Click on the color thing here. This is how you change colors for anything uh, in the designer, you know, choose something there, click on this one, colorize this. Now you can see there's a lot of little bitty individual colors, right, going on in there. Um, and it took us a while. So you could click on this one, uh, hold your shift key, click on that one, and your shift key and click on that one and go ahead and colorize all those red. Let's say, let me use red as an example here, see? And I can select this one and hold my shift key and that one. And this is just like, any software application like Photoshop or Illustrator or something and click on that and do this and we can make that orange. I don't know, why not? You know, you get the idea, right? So ungrouping things, selecting it, colorizing all these bits and pieces individually, which is super cool. Um, and then just drag everything and then go to object menu again and then group it. And then now I can move them all at the same time and place my one piece in here, uh, you know? And if you look at, with something selected, if you look at these things here, right? Um, we can mirror it, clicking on that, and it's gonna flip it, which is cool, because that's how we did it this way, right? If I undo that, um, this right here, this that tree is how it came in as that one color. Well, we, we flipped it the other way and made it a whole bunch of colors. So you get the idea. Now, if I bring this over here, right? He's on top. If I go to change my order, I can go back right? Um, I can go all the way to the back. I can move it one up, which if you notice it went up right there, you know, I can come over here and bring it all the way to the top again. So you can stack the order of your elements or your layers this way. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't want to do that. I'm just showing you how these things work, right? So I'm gonna click on that and, and delete it, but uh, you get the idea. So even again, now, if I wanted to change my artboard to the landscape, I can do that because this design fits this shape page better, I suppose. Uh, so, all right. I think we're getting close. Uh, any other questions, Ryan? Do you know? I can't see anything in the chat on this side. Yeah, um, actually, Melissa just asked if there was a way to see which layers you clicked other than with the box on the image. No. Like a layer tab that she might be missing. No, there's, there, we don't have layers in here that I know of. No. Okay. I didn't think but, so either. Yeah. You just select individual elements like that. Right. And um, that's the only way that, that I, that I know of that works uh, the way this works in here. Right. I know Pamela was, was asking to about, you know, if there was any classes on how to convert artwork uh, to vector art. Hmm. I don't, I don't have any, I don't think, um, right. and I've done that in, in a bunch of my seminars and the trade shows and things, but it's, it's been a while, but right. you know, it's a good idea. So I'm going to make a note and, um, maybe we'll have that as a, as a lesson on our site. Right. Yeah. That's a really good idea for sure. I know a lot of people have questions about how to convert to vector and, um, you know, I always advise them just to invest in a decent art software, but there's a lot yeah. out there, you know, there's so much and that's, you know, and that's if, part of the, the confusion, right? So right. there's Corel Draw Suite, there's Adobe Suites, there's Affinity Photo Suites, there's, uh, you know, a lot of free stuff. I mean, I, you, there's so many things out there that, one, you could never use all of them. The, the thing is, you, whoever you are, just need to pick one, right? Right. Uh, I can tell you this, the whole world works and lives in Adobe. Um, half the world lives in Corel, and then there's the other stuff, right? So, but for the price point, and what it capabilities are affinity designer and affinity photo. I'll just throw that out there as a uh, very inexpensive way to do quality graphics. They're awesome. Yeah, for sure. I think they raised their price to 49 bucks, but that's still a pretty darn good deal. So yeah, it, like I said, $50, I mean, that's pretty much it, but it, they do put it on sale quite a bit. So if you want, if you got time, wait, hang out, you know, check a holiday sale or something, then you'll see it. If not still 50 bucks is, you know, that's a one month, rental fee from Adobe. So, right. So I think that's a great idea though. If you, if you are going to teach another class, um, showing them how to vectorize thing, that would probably be a really popular class. I think a lot of people are having that same question right now. Yeah. Sounds like a good one. Perfect. All right. 
So uh, I guess we're about out of time now. Yeah, I think so. But if anybody has any extra questions, um, please email us at info at transferexpress.com. Uh, Dane, what's your email again for Great Dane? It's Dane, D-A-N-E, at greatdanegraphics.com. Also, Ryan, I'm going to be part of the panel tonight at 8 o'clock Central Time. Um, if you got questions, that is a great place to ask them because, you know, Josh will be there. Jen will be there. It's a, everybody answering questions type of thing. For sure. I think we're going to yeah. make that a happy hour, too. We were kind of chatting about that earlier. I'll be there tonight as well. Uh, so if you haven't signed up, definitely join us this evening. Um, Dane, myself, as he mentioned, Josh will be there. Jenna will be there. A um, whole bunch of other people. So if you guys want to go out and get yourselves a, um, a beverage and join us, uh, we'll be back in three hours to answer questions. So, awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Hey, thank you, Dane. Hey, guys. Thanks for coming.